and welcome to our coffee break for Thursday, April 8th. Uh, again, it's amazing how fast time is going. Uh, and every time I record one of these, I think to myself, oh my goodness, I've got another one to record in just a couple days. So uh, it's been good to spend time with you all. And, uh, you know, I'm, I enjoy doing this, uh, but I also enjoy meeting with you face to face over Skype or Zoom. So please let me know if you'd like to set up a meeting about anything that we talk about in these videos or about anything related to uh, your internship requirement, YU requirement, cable, um, any professional related topics that you would like to discuss, please shoot me an email and we can schedule a time and talk about it. I've been doing this and meeting with students over Zoom and Skype uh, quite, a, quite a bit over the past few weeks and uh, it's been working well and it's good to, good to interact and see you all and to hear about what's going on in your lives and uh, to hear about what you're thinking about for, uh, for your next steps uh, after waiting for uh, I hope advising went well with your faculty advisors a few weeks ago and that you've been able to get registered for classes, all of this stuff. What we're talking about here, professional development, advising, registering for classes for the fall semester, and just in general getting yourself prepared professionally for your next steps in your journey through Wittenberg and in your future vocation or career after, after graduation is really important during these times to help us you know, keep our eyes hopeful, hopefully gazing for a better day and a better future. And and uh, I know some days, uh, for many of us, it might just feel like we we can only brace for the moment that we're living in, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, we need to take care of ourselves and uh, uh, do what we need to do through this uh, time of uh, social distancing and um, the pandemic that we're currently living through. But it's also good to, uh, if we're able to do so, to, to think ahead and to have a hopeful um uh, view and perspective for the future. So I hope some of this, uh, some of these videos on Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are helping you uh, think ahead a little bit and get your mind off of all that's going on. And, um, you know, we hope you're staying healthy and well, and that is what we can ask for in this moment. So uh, thanks for stopping by. Today, we're actually going to talk a little bit about searching for internships. Uh, this will be a little bit shorter than some of the other videos that I've created. I know last Tuesday, the one on uh, resume writing was a little bit long, uh, and that's just the nature of the content. It's hard to get everything out uh, to get your resume up to par and, and where it should be in, in a shorter period of time. So today I'm going to try to keep the video a little shorter than we usually do. Uh, and we're going to just talk a little bit about searching for internships and the strategy and resources available to you as a student at Wittenberg uh, that are helpful for uh, for that search process. So. Uh, I've created a quick reference guide that I'm going to go through word for, not word for word, but piece by piece, uh, and add my own thoughts into some of the, the points I make in the quick reference guide. It's posted on Moodle on the department page. It's posted on our department website under career preparation if you're interested in checking out the, the, the document itself. Uh, I think I created it out of a sense of, you know, students would come to me and ask, well, how do I search for an internship? And... I found myself, you know, I, I have a lot of things that I personally can offer to you to help, uh, whether it be connecting with alumni or providing ideas for internship opportunities, but it's also helpful for you to know what other resources outside of me and career services are available to you um, uh, in this process and just how they all fit together. Um, we all, all of us, myself, career services, people that you're networking with, we all play a piece uh, in that, you know, web of resources that you have that can help you find and secure an internship and, and really even a job after graduation. It doesn't just have to be an internship in general. Uh, and so I always like to say, as we're going through this whole forum, that just like you want to be diversified in your uh, in your investments, if you've ever heard Dr. Wilson say that, uh, you also want to be diversified in your job search process. So uh, simply going to one place or getting advice from one person or doing one thing is not going to be really helpful for you uh, in the long run as a strategy for, for securing a job or an internship in the future. I'm really helpful. I try to be really helpful at least. Uh, uh, and I know other, uh, other places Places on campus like career services are as well, but we at the end of the day don't give you a job or an internship, and that's an important distinction to understand. 
we give you the tools, the resources, the knowledge, and the uh, and the connections to try to, to 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 get you to earn that internship or that job uh, based on you know your ability to sell yourself and your experience to a potential employer or uh, person that that you're working with. And and so there is we try to give you as much agency in this process as possible to make sure that you feel that the success that you've received has been supported by all of us, but at the same time is really your your success at the end of the day. You did the work and put in the work to get that job or that internship, and you can be proud of it. Uh, and so we're here to help. We're here to support you along the way and provide all the resources and connections and opportunities that we can. But we want you to have the agency to actually feel like you are in control of directing this pathway that you are that, that you're forging ahead for the future. And so because of that, and because that always was the initial conversation I had with students uh, before we really got into the nitty gritty of what they they're interested in and what they want to do for the future and what they feel you know uh, they're being drawn to work you know work related or you know what they're passionate about uh, before we draw in draw you know kind of drill into some of those things uh, it was helpful for them just to know what was at their fingertips and so this guide uh, I'm going to go through it now and it's also posted online so feel free to take a look um, uh, if you if you would like to, uh, to to help you out for your future so let's just start off just by talking a little bit about some general tips. And again, we already talked about the diversification piece, that you don't want to just have one strategy, one job board, one individual, one contact, one company uh, that you're working through to try to secure a job or internship. We can have goals, but it's always, you know, you don't want to just apply to one company and hope for the best. Uh, you may be really excited about working for J.P. Morgan. Uh, that's always the example I use, so let me come up with another one. You may be really excited about working for the Ohio Environmental Council, for instance, and working as a marketing intern there, and that's the only place you've applied for so far. And that's great if you really want to work there, but I would, you know, for for most of you, I would diversify the you know, the number of applications that you've submitted. And, you know, again, you don't want to pepper every place with your applica applications, but you also want to have a plan B and a plan C when you when you get that letter from the Ohio Environmental Council that says, we're sorry, we're not able to go forward with your application at this time. Putting all your hope into one uh, internship application uh, for the summer is, uh, you know, is, is not a strategy that ends well oftentimes. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you have multiple opportunities that you're working towards at the same time. Uh, so at the end of the day, you're not left uh, with nothing. Uh, and same thing goes for job search process. So diversifying the, the jobs that you're applying to and also the methods that you're using uh, and applying to them at the end of the day. I always recommend also scheduling a time for yourself uh, every week or every day, whatever the, you know, the, the, time, you know, the regularity doesn't, you know, I don't have any recommendations on that necessarily, um, but I do recommend that you have a regularly scheduled time where you're devoting everything the entire time to searching and to working through your job and, and, and internship applications. Um, you know, blocking off an hour, two days a week, every week until you're through this process will be helpful in just making sure that you can stay on top of things and that you're not just kind of doing it as time comes available. Uh, if you really want to be invested in this search process for an internship or a job, you want to make sure that you're blocking off the time that you need uh, so that you can actually devote uh, all your energy to, to searching. Uh, a once and done strategy is going to mean you're going to miss internships and jobs that come open. If you start searching today and you find 10 or 15 jobs or internships that you're interested in, you apply for them, uh, and then, you know, but you, but you didn't really find any at a couple companies you're interested in, but then you don't actually go back and search again a week later or two weeks later, you may miss them. Jobs come open uh, and close at all days and times of the week. And so if you only if you only select one time a month to search for jobs and internships and, and, and get applications done, you're going to miss some at the end of the day. It's just the it's just the reality of the fact that you need a regular, consistent uh, rhythm of, you know, going and, and going through these steps of searching uh, and, and seeking out opportunities. Uh, I think that it's just helpful if you block that time off and, and reserve it for that purpose. 
I would always keep a spreadsheet or a database of some sort track. Just keep track of all the positions that you've applied for and those that you're interested in applying for or following up on. Um, you want to make sure that you know where you've applied, uh, you know, who you may know at a company organization and whether you've reached out to them. Uh, and have you followed up with them after, after applying? Have you, um, you know, have you received any word from them or heard from them? Do you, do you have contact information? Like there's a lot of stuff that's involved in applying for an application more than just filling out an application on a company's website. And so you want to make sure that you have a place where you can keep track of all of this. Where have I applied? What's their contact information? Who do I know that works there that I may be able to talk to about this position? Um, when's the last time I heard from them? Like all of those things, you just, it gets to the point when you've done 10 applications uh, and you're interested in 10 more positions, it just becomes a lot to remember off the top of your head. And so it's just good to keep track uh, of all of these applications uh, in, or the positions you're interested in in some sort of spreadsheet or database. So uh, try to do that or set something like that up uh, if you can. You know, it's important to remember that, especially for those of you who are applying for internships or something like that, that companies may welcome an intern. They may host an intern. They may be more than willing to have you come on board and spend some time with them working for a summer, for a semester, whatever. But they may not have an opening. This is true for a lot of smaller firms, local hometown firms, uh, you know, small accounting firms, marketing firms, like places that have maybe 50 or less employees or, you know, those are great internship experiences because you often get a wider range of experience there because, you know, smaller organizations, you know, they don't have the major departments that kind of silo people into different uh, categories. And you often may get experience or exposure to more things when working for a smaller company, but they also, because they don't have the bandwidth or maybe the, the staffing power of a large uh, organization, they may also not have a, a strong recruiting arm uh, or, you know, arm that, 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 you know, they may not have a lot of openings all the time, so they may not need a strong recruiting arm, meaning, you know, they don't do formalized internships or programs. But if they receive a resume from a promising student who's interested in, you know, spending some time with them over the summer for an internship, they, they may be willing to host you. Uh, and the only way that you're going to be able to work through that and, and, and figure that out is to network with those, with those companies and just send your resume. Maybe it involves walking into three of your local accounting firms, meeting with the receptionist and dropping off a resume and saying, hey, I'm looking for an internship this summer. I'm really interested in working somewhere here in this community. I'm really interested in your firm. I hope that you can get this to the to the right person who may be able to to think about that. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways you can do that. Uh, it may involve that example of walking in. It may involve just sending an email. It may involve you know working through your those people that you may know to get connected with someone who works in a small firm. But just because a company uh, doesn't have an internship on their website doesn't necessarily mean that they're not willing to have one for the summer. It just may mean that you need to uh, do some legwork on your end to, you know, to, to get them thinking of maybe an intern would be fine for the summer, that we could use the extra, the extra help. And like I say, uh, like I said in a previous, the previous uh, uh, video, networking can be a lifeline uh, in any search process. Uh, who you know and who can connect you to who is important for, you know, for, for receiving a job at the end of the day. I want to go through quickly, I'm not going to spend much time on this, some on-campus resources that are available for you to search for positions and to find internships. Obviously, Career Services hosts uh, a platform called Handshake. Uh, I use this regularly and am forwarding positions to students who are, who are looking for internships all the time uh, from this platform. And you can go on here and find information about different companies, uh, internships that are open and do it geographically based on location and category. And there's a lot of positions on here all over the country. And, you know, Wittenberg alums can post positions directly to this board for Wittenberg students, but it also uh, kind of coalesces other internship uh, experiences from other job boards and other places. And because all sorts of schools use this, 
often the breadth of experiences and opportunities that are on this board are pretty wide. Uh, and so I would, everyone has an account that they can claim through Career Services uh, if you're a Wittenberg student. So try to do that and log on and, and do some searching there. You can create a profile for yourself. Uh, you can also register for all of Career Services events like job fairs and uh, uh, the etiquette dinner and things like that that they host. And they have resources on there as well that you can take a look at. So Handshake is a pretty neat tool that we just got this past uh, summer, I believe. They also have Career Shift, which is a tool that you'll have, you can create an account on through Career Services that allows you, it also has some job postings and some information about companies that you can find on there, uh, salary information, I believe, too. Uh, but it, it mainly is helpful because it provides contact information for executives and people who work at different organizations that you may want to reach out to and conduct maybe an informational interview with, network with, that type of thing. It's got a lot of contact information from Wittenberg alums as well as just, you know, just traditional employees at different companies you may be interested in. Uh, and, you know, you can find people by field, by company, uh, and, and, and some of their contact information is there. So I think that's pretty helpful uh, for you if you want to use CareerShift as a tool in your networking. Career Services also hosts career fairs and on-campus recruiting that happens every semester. Um, and you can keep track of these when these events take place on Handshake, uh, as well as the probably the Career Services social accounts as well. Um, obviously, this semester is quite uh, uh, different just because of us working remotely, but hopefully in the fall, um, all of that will be back to normal. Uh, and you can, you can find that information on Handshake. I'm a resource for you all as well. Uh, if you're a business major, uh, I can help you connect with alumni that have hosted our interns in the past. I can help you connect with alumni in your field. Uh, but I'm going to mention this more later. You know, it's helpful for me if you have narrowed uh, some of your thoughts about your internship uh, or job opportunity down to some, some, some general field areas of work and places geographically and that type of thing. So we'll talk about that in a minute um, and, and I'll go, I'll kind of expand on that. And then obviously on campus, we have many speakers that come into classes in the business department all the time. Um, from different places to cover different topics. I know I had someone talk about interviewing. It worked for a company in Dayton. Uh, I was a recruiter for a company in Dayton for Business 365 this semester. Uh, I host uh, people in the cable course all the time. We have department speakers for large event colloquiums. Um, and, you know, I know Tim brings in, Dr. Bodie brings in a lot of speakers to his marketing classes, and everyone does this in the department. And so it's important to know that those are people you can connect with before or after class. Um, send them a thank you email, follow up with them, and tell them that you appreciate them spending time on campus, uh, and connect with them for the future. They're resources for you, um, and most of them are alums, which means that they're much more willing to, you know, spend time helping Wittenberg students because they have that, that institutional connection. Uh, and so don't just look at class speakers as a way that, as a way to, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, get off of class content for a, for a day or something like that. But they're actually really there to help you and to provide value to you and the people that you may want to interact with for, for searching or thinking about jobs or internships for the future. Some outside resources that are available, obviously, LinkedIn is a helpful tool for both networking and connecting with other professionals, but there's also jobs and internships that are posted there as well, as well as other online job boards like Indeed, Monster.com, Monster.com, ZipRecruiter, um, you know, all of these job boards. Ohio, well, we'll talk about Ohio means jobs in a minute, but these are all places where companies post jobs online and you can sometimes apply directly through the site or that will link you back to the company's website where you can submit an application. I always, I always kind of um, add a little bit of a subnote to this, meaning saying that a lot of times job boards are never-ending search results lists. So, you know, if you go to Google and you search for something, you know, you can go pages and pages of search results, you know, that, that Google finds for you. And so are the job boards. Some of them have cross-posting, so you may find the same experience posted on multiple job boards. But job boards work with an algorithm that tries to match up what you've searched with what's most relevant to you. And if you don't really 
have an idea of what you want to do or where you want to be or what type of field you might be interested in or company you might be working for, these can be very cumbersome uh, because they just give you never any list of jobs. And so I would use these definitely and, and make sure you use a, a mix of all of them, but use them cautiously uh, because at the end of the day, you can be searching forever and ever and still uh, feel like you're hard-pressed to find something that's, that, 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 that makes sense for you. In addition, uh, Glassdoor.com is a very great site for just, uh, it's kind of like a, a Angie's List or a, a Yelp for companies. Um, employees can leave reviews and uh, talk about their experience working with a company and organization. They can leave salary information. They can leave, you know, information about what benefits the company offers. So these are reviews from employees who work at a specific company um, that they are providing that information and reviewing the company online. So you can learn a little bit about the internal culture of a company or the internal experience of their employees uh, just by looking through some of this information on Glassdoor. Uh, and they also have a job board as well. Like I said, again, there's a million job boards out there. Use them cautiously. State and local um, governments also run their own job boards. They have job boards for positions with the state or the local government, but they also run job boards too that uh, are meant for people or companies in that city or in that state uh, to post jobs to for people looking in those areas. So Ohio has a, a site called Ohio Means Jobs. Columbus used to have a site called columbusinternships.com. Um, all of those, you know, cities, states, uh, local governments have tried to create their own uh, job search platforms for people working and needing employees and looking for positions in local communities that you may want to think about looking into. Again, use the job boards cautiously. And then finally, for just some of these outside resources, industry and trade associations uh, also have uh, job boards typically. And this is important, especially if you're looking to go into a specific field or a specific type of work. If you're interested in retail, for, in for instance, uh, the National Retail Federation, the trade association that represents all retailers uh, across the country, has a job board for positions specifically working in a retail environment. Side note, the CEO or the president of National Retail Federation is Wittenberg alum. So just a side note. Uh, but they have, a, they have a job board that has positions specifically catered to the companies that they work with and represent in that industry. The American Marketing Association has the same. So all of these trade associations are good opportunities for you to um, find positions working within a specific field by going directly to uh, their association uh, job board. Those associations also have a lot of cool networking events that are oftentimes open for students if you're interested in working in that field and want to you know, want to think about uh, working, you know, in retail or marketing or other, you know, other industries. Those associations often host a lot of conferences and events that have student rates and student uh, opportunities to attend and uh, network with those professionals. So think about that uh, if you're interested uh, in doing something like that in the future. So finally, I just want to end uh, this on some General notes again. Uh, we began on the on some notes about just searching in general and diversifying, but I do want to I, I want to end on a few notes uh, as well that I think are helpful. Make sure you have your resume and cover letter ready to go and reviewed by you know an expert or a professional uh, before applying. I recognize having your friend review your resume is helpful, uh, but you should really be thinking about having someone, maybe the writing center, career services, myself. Um, an alum or someone you're connected to who's a working professional in the job market right now, have someone review your resume who can provide some detailed advice knowing, you know, what really should be on that document, how it should be written. Um, make sure that's ready because as you're going, you're going to want to jump on these opportunities as you see them, as you're networking with people, as you see them pop open, you're going to want to apply quickly so that you're not waiting around and missing that opportunity. Make sure you have that, that ready to go. I would also create a search plan. A search plan doesn't have to be a long drawn out process, but it just needs to be something where you sit down and think about what am I interested in? What do I think uh, could be you know, meaningful or 
um, you know, relevant work for me for the future? What are some places that I am wanting to gain some experience in? What are some industries or some types of positions? Like, you know, just saying you're interested in marketing is one thing, but saying, you know, I really want to learn digital advertising and working with online social media and search advertising. That is a specific type of work in a larger marketing field. And a search plan is going to help you think about how to narrow some of those things down um, so that you're not just doing such a broad search that it becomes unmanageable for you. You want to, you know, make sure you give yourself enough opportunities to diversify your, your, your applications, but you also don't want to have so many options because you're, you're really, your criteria is so broad that in the end of the day, you're spending a lot of time on things that are really not interesting to you or maybe are kind of a far-fetched idea for what you really want. A job search plan helps you think about what you're interested in, what types of work you may want to gain some experience in. Geographical locations are important. You know, if you're really only willing, and it's more than just willing, it's willing and feasible. What would be feasible for you? Are you able to, are you able to, you know, uh, support and you know living in the Bay Area for the for summer, or do you re should you really only be looking for internships in the Columbus or Dayton area if that's where you live? Um, everyone has a different ability to do different things, and so knowing those geographical locations are helpful. Um, it's nice to be thinking, oh, I want to, I just want to move to Texas for the summer to work in an internship, but if you don't have an idea yet of where you might live there and how that might work itself out, um, there's a chance that your summer internship income may not pay for your rent and your experience in Texas that summer. Um, and you just kind of have to know, is that something that you can make up on your end to, you know, to, to be able to provide that yourself with that experience? Uh, or if you can't pay for rent and living in an area like Houston for a summer, if your internship, you know, salary doesn't cover it, um, is that a is that a negative aspect for you? So this isn't a this isn't discouraging you from branching out and looking at places outside of where you're currently living. I think that's actually a good thing to do. But you also have to know you know what's really feasible for you so that you're not um, expending a lot of energy and time on applying to companies and, and jobs and places where you may get the offer, but the logistics and the the ability to actually live there, move there financially. Uh, logistically over the summer just aren't possible and you know you want to know that stuff ahead of time so be thinking about that uh, but yeah a job search plan will just help for, will it really you should just be sitting down and thinking to yourself what are the places the interests and uh, the types of positions that I'm interested in for this summer and trying to have that narrowed down so that as you're approaching me as you're approaching career services as you're approaching these job search tools you kind of know and have an idea in your mind that's narrow enough for us to really be able to jump in and provide some recommendations for you. Um, we can help you if you have a broad idea of what you want to do, but sometimes it's easier for us to be able to provide you with valuable recommendations and valuable ideas uh, if we, if you have, you know, uh, uh, if you've thought through um, what might be interesting and feasible for you. Make sure you know industry recruiting cycles. Some industries start recruiting for jobs and internships the fall of the year before that you would actually start. So, you know, accounting is notorious for this. Big four firms will start recruiting for summer internships for 2021 in like August, September, October of this year. So uh, oftentimes, if you're looking to work for a big four accounting firm and you come to me in like April right now for the summer, uh, I'm not saying it's impossible but the recruiting cycles for many of those companies have long passed. Uh, and, you know, it's difficult to get a position in a big four firm anyway, so you have to do a lot of uh, legwork on your end um, in order to get in the door. And so if you don't start early enough, meaning following the recruiting cycle of the industry, uh, that may be difficult for you uh, to get an internship at the last minute. So think about that. And then finally, go direct. I mentioned a lot of resources. I mentioned a lot of job boards. Sometimes, though, companies have a reputation uh, and enough applications without posting their positions anywhere but their own website. Uh, 
And so if you're looking for internships, uh, you know, at larger companies or companies with a lar with a pretty sizable brand image and brand name that people would want to work for them, um, Google is one, Apple is one, um, you know, all the big four firms pretty much can fall into this category. I mean, Amazon, they may post internships and stuff on job boards, but a lot of times they have that brand and name recognition where they don't have to. They don't have to post on these boards because they know they're going to get enough applications anyway and enough qualified applications anyway. And so sometimes to find those internships, you don't, you can't just rely on the job board. You can't just rely on people re recommending things to you, but you really need to go direct to the company website uh, to think about that. So. I think that's enough, again, for today. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Again, I don't want this all to sound discouraging uh, for your search process because it's really supposed to be a positive experience for you. But a lot of times it comes down to how do you differentiate yourself from all the other 50 to 100 people applying for some of these positions? Uh, and how do you, you know, manage your search process well enough so that you can put a lot of energy to a good number of diversified applications rather than doing one of two extremes. You only apply for one internship because you're really banking on it or you are so broad in your search process that it's just overwhelming, there's too many options and, uh, and the options really you haven't thought through them enough to know whether they're really feasible for you. So. I say all this not to limit what you want to do, but to say that you need to put some intentional thought behind the search process so that you can be successful in it. Uh, and please reach out to me. I'm willing to help and provide you with ideas and internship opportunities and job opportunities as they come to me and to career services on those boards and as our alumni reach out. We, can, we try to be as helpful as possible, but again, we want you to have the agency uh, to take control of this pathway that you're forging ahead, uh, and so we want to we wanna help support you uh, in doing the work to find and network your way into jobs and internships. We're resources for you. We're here to help you. Uh, please let me know uh, how we can be of assistance. Take care. Again, stay safe, stay safe and be healthy. And we'll meet again next Tuesday uh, for another round of uh, our coffee break. Again, post questions in the chat if you want to. Thanks. Take care.